On to our next speaker. Um, I'm sure he may look familiar to many of you as uh, he's appeared many times on Spread Betting UK videos on YouTube. Mark has over 20 years active trading experience with a focus on short-term price action strategies. He also launched a trading community called Traders Mastermind um, in order to help clients make better trading decisions. So now Mark will, I'll hand over the floor to Mark to share with us his routine and other key insights. Thank you, Luke. Thank you so much. Uh, let me share my screen and hopefully we can get going. Uh, what an exciting announcement from uh, TradingView. TradingView and Pepperstone combo. I like it. I love TradingView and obviously, you know, you guys as well. That's uh, that's really, really good. Good job on getting that one done. Okay, so let me start my stopwatch and I've got 20 minutes. I'll uh, stick to those 20 minutes. Okay, so if you don't know me, my name is Mark Holstead. I started trading in uh, 2001. Actually, my first edge, and the reason I tell you this is to kind of give you an idea of the type of trader I am. And you can say, hey, do I want to listen to this guy? Do I want to take a few things from this guy or not? So my edge, my, my first kind of after losing loads of money at the beginning, like everybody does, right? I found an edge trading mining shares on the London Stock Exchange. I have a leader's laggard type strategy that worked for a while. Then I took advantage of the switch from CQ to sets. Now, some of you guys might remember that, but we were putting orders all through market makers and London Stock Exchange. Then it went to automated. Now that had been going for quite a while, but what I noticed was some of the algorithms were very primitive. And I developed a nice edge by spotting some of these algorithms, moving the market, holding the market. And that lasted for quite a while. And that was a really nice kind of early edge. So, you know, you can see now the, the theme of, of reading tape, reading price action, supply demand. And I just changed the edges, conditions change, so iceberg spotting on crude oil, all that type of stuff. So that's the type of trader I am. So tape reader, supply demand. I love to look at it from that perspective. And, you know, you know guys, I know you from price action. If you've seen my, my videos, I actually, funnily enough, started putting uh, videos on YouTube to stop me over trading. I was like, right, I'm in a trade. Don't touch the thing, sit on your hands. Jesse Livermore says sit on your hands, sit on those hands. So what can I do? I don't, you know, I'll do a YouTube video. Maybe some people like it. And here we are, 335,000 subscribers later. You guys seem to like some of the stuff I talk about, which is great. I mean, I'm grateful for you uh, subscribers. UK Spread Ben, if you haven't um, checked it out yet. And actually I created the Traders Mastermind community uh, in the pandemic, in the heart of the pandemic. Uh, we had a face-to-face -face group. We used to meet up all the time. I thought, you know what? This can go online. So I created this community and we've got, you know, we're focused on mindset, strategy, discipline, uh, and profitability. So you want to check that out, tradersmastermind.com. All right, so let's move on. So becoming the trader you want to be in 2022. Um, and I always like to, to add, as the guys on Mastermind know when you do the Zoom calls, I like to add a, a, a quote from the Stoics. So Marcus Aurelius here, uh, our life is what our thoughts make it. I think there's a great parallel between the Stoic philosophy uh, and trading. Don't be emotionless, uh, but at the same time, being aware of the emotions. Okay, so how are we going to reach our goals in 2022? I'm a big fan of going through a process. I'm going to share with you now in these next 20 minutes or so, the process that I like to do at the end of each year. And also, you know, there's no reason why you can't do it mid-year. I think, you know, yeah, New Year's resolutions and all that, but it's a good timestamp, right? Everyone knows it's the end of the year, funds are done at the end of the year, compensation for traders is done at the end of the year, profitability, all that type of stuff. So number one, we want to learn from our mistakes. Number two, we want to leverage on our trading experiences. And number three, double down on strengths. Huge fan of that. What do we got? What am I good at? What am I going to do more, do more, do more, go harder, minimize the impact of weaknesses. Let's just try and avoid them. But sometimes it's hard to avoid them completely, but rather than fixing it, why can't I just trade something that doesn't really amplify my weaknesses? Listen to your intuition and inner voice. Huge fan of this. Do more on this in a moment. Construct a robust trading plan around that and then keep our thoughts and actions aligned with our desired goal and outcome. And that's going to be the final slide. And that's a little bit of a, an extra thing that I think, you know, I hope you find some value from that. So three-step process to becoming the trader you want to be in 2022. Number one, review. Data-driven approach. Number two, reflection, instinct, and emotion. And number three, revise and strategically adjust the trading plan. We need all of these elements. I need logic, part of me, to go, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm sticking to this rule. This is why I'm executing in this way. There's my logic brain, tick. I also need the emotion side of it. I need the subconscious. If there's something niggling, like, oh, you know what? Every now and then you're doing this. I need to reflect on that. So we'll talk about that now. And then revise 
obviously we're using that data to strategically adjust our training plan. Okay, so here's the process for you. And like I say, you know, you take bits of this away if, if you think it's got some value or, you know, discard it or, or what, whatever you feel, but th this, this works for me. So data-driven approach, look at the top 10% of your trades from last year, top 10%. So just like Alpesh was saying, the Pareto principle, 80-20 rule, um, this is the same type of thing. So look at the top 10% of winning trades and what's the commonality between those trades? Is it specific conditions? Like, are you very good in a trend environment? Or are you very good in mean reversion? Is it an instrument? Like, hey, no, I'm a bit crap on gold, but actually I'm quite good on cable, I'm good on crude. You know, there's going to be a commonality there. Is it a certain strategy that you're implementing? Is it a certain time of day? Is it personal circumstances? Because, guys, you know, we've got lives outside of the markets. Well, <laughs> some of us have. Lives outside of the markets. We're not always watching things. We've got family, got the commitments and, and, and things going on. So is it perhaps when you have a day off and you can trade all day? Or is it perhaps when you take your kids to school, for example, and you can trade the open on the DAX? It's the personal circumstances sometimes can make better returns because you're just clearer and think and you're more uh, refreshed. Monday morning's off the nemesis for a lot of traders on a side note. Okay, and then looking at the losing bottom 10% of trades. So same thing, but what's the commonality between those? You know, and this is such a good practice because you can go, yeah, you know what, look, it's obvious to me when I look at those 10% losing trades at the bottom half, the bottom 10%, it's just when I'm trading too much. It's when I'm adding to losers. It's when I'm breaking something rule, when I'm trading on tilt. If you're a day trader, trading on tilt, biggest nemesis. You have the best strategy in the world. Everything can be lined up perfectly, but if you break a rule every now and then, end up blowing up your account or doing massive damage to it intraday, you're stuffed. You, you can't make any progress. So what's the commonality between the losing trades? Is it conditions again? Are you overtrading, holding losers? What is it? Have a look at that. 80-20 rule. 10% of top trades, 10% of bottom trades. And I'm, I'm going quite quickly through this. So you know, you can you can uh, you can ask me questions, of course, and contact me. There's a there's an email address on the website if I'm running through this. But I want to get this. Um, done. And I want to kind of cover a lot of, a lot of ground today and give you a lot of value because in the day, Fed is going on beside me. Fed is going on. I know you guys have got one eye on the markets. So I uh, appreciate you being there. Okay. If you could eliminate, think about this. If you could eliminate 50% of the worst losing trades, what would your PL look like? You know, just think to yourself. Just think back on last year and go, damn it, you know what? It was a handful of those trades that were just stinkers, you know, or a handful of days if you're a day trader. If you could eliminate half of those, what would the PL look like? I bet it would look pretty decent. I bet you'd be in a pretty comfortable place with that. So why try and do anything miraculous? Why not look at what you've got, the evidence you've got in front of you, the data you've got in front of you, and go, hey, if I can halve those awful trades, where I'd be, and then go one step further and say, hey, if I could double the return on my three best days or trades, where would the what would the PL look like then? It's gonna look damn good because you're gonna have some days where you just smashed it. You're right in tune with the market. You're the ebbs and flows. You're buying those lows. You're just running it, holding the trade, scaling. You know the feeling. If you're a day trader and if you're a swing trader, you just you just when you're in flow, you're in flow. Conditions are right. You're feeling right. You're spot on. You're nailing the strategy. You're feeling good. You're not the emotional thermometer is not too high, too low. It's just a nice position to be in. So imagine if you just doubled the return. I say just double, but if you doubled the returns on just the three days or three best trades and then halve those, all of a sudden, has that changed your results? Has that massively improved your results? Yes. So this is what we're trying to do. So we have the logic side of it, right? The logic side of it is okay. And we look at the data, we look at the trades, let me see the commonality, let me see the theme, let me come up with what I'm trying to do. Okay, right. Now I need the subconscious side of it, if you like. I mean, probably using the incorrect phrase here, but reflecting on how I feel about my trading. And you know, what did I do well? And I know for some of you, if you've been struggling in trading, this is a very difficult question to ask. If you are, if you've been frankly losing, if you've had a red year and you just can't seem to get traction. It's very difficult to think about what you, you did well, but there's something, I promise you there is something that you have done well. When do you operate at your best? Is it in a mean reversing environment, for example? I'm a big fan of kind of fine tuning and trading in the environment. Are you good at trading the open? Are you good at sending a tra uh, trading a specific instrument? What about holding time? Are you good at holding things a little bit longer, scalping? What is it? And that reflection just really helps bring these ideas up. And what's your biggest challenge? And, and I know, again, if you're, if you're kind of trying to move forward in your training, trying to get better, you're like, well, how long have you got? 
you know, I'm over trading, I'm holding my losers, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm not preparing all this. Just, okay, just relax yourself and say, what's the biggest domino? So there's one thing that if you knocked it down, would knock down everything else. Example, great example for day traders, trading on tilt. If you have a propensity to trade on tilt, imagine if you eliminated that. That would affect your trading massively. That's your biggest domino. So is it trading on tilt, over trading, breaking risk rules, FOMO, your risk shy, perhaps you're not pulling the trigger on stuff or trading the size you need to trade on the, the right ideas. You've got no, no real plan or strategy. So just think about that. Take time to reflect. So valuable, this guy's this, this double pronged approach. Logic side, because I need this. I need both sides of my brain to go, okay, I understand. Because my chimp, when I'm sitting there and I'm in the heat of the moment, and I'm about to pull the trigger, I'm about to do something, is a bloody good arguer. He knows exactly what to say to me, but I can counter it and say, well, logic says, no, I'm not going to pull the trigger now because I'm waiting. And, and the emotional side of things says, hey, you know, this is not what I want to do. All right, so after we've done that, we want to combine these to construct a trading plan. Or if you've got one already, great, revise the trading plan. So we combine the logical trade review with that inner reflection to get the combo. And that's when we build a robust and meaningful trading plan that we can stick to. Because, you know, guys, it's hard to stick. It's all very well saying, yeah, I've got this plan. I've written all these things out. Right, great. They take the tick on the box, Mark. Can I get a kind of get a sticker? Yeah, but in the heat of the moment, how many of us are chucking the plan out the window? You know, we, we break one rule, and then the worst case scenario is we break one rule and we throw the whole thing under the bus. We take one trade more than we, we wanted to. We we over take too much risk and then we hop, throw the whole plan away. And that's the worst thing you can do. So we want a plan that's easy to stick to and aligns us with our trading goals. So what goes into the trading plan? Now, this is a huge topic. Um, and I've got uh, some, some videos on this actually on the, on the channel if you want to check it out. Um, but you know, what goes into the trading plan? Let's try and do this as, as, as briefly in a kind of overview as we can today. So I am a really big fan of doing this, the overarching approach. It's a very personal trading plan. I like to build structure and boundaries that are just non-negotiable, not going to do anything. I'm not going to go outside of those, but give myself room to be flexible. So what do I mean by this? So construct that plan around your findings. Hey, example, I'm going to trade the open on the back, so mean reversion play or an opening drive play, or I like swing trading at US equities around earnings season. You're good at that. You've defined, you've defined that. So as your findings, you start to construct the plan. And there's a lot more detail of that, but hopefully you get the idea. Now create those strict risk rules. They're the red line. I am not going to break my risk rules because if I break my risk rules, what chance have I got of moving forward? If you know most of us are trading uh, on our own account from home, a retail trader, we don't have a risk manager coming on, tapping us on the shoulder saying, you're done for the day, son. Get out. Come back tomorrow, which is what most of us need. So you need to have those strict risk rules. So there's your structure. But now... I like to have some kind of flexibility. I don't want to be too shackled. I hate being shackled. And you must, you probably do too. You're like, oh, I want to take this trade, but my rules say I can't. As long as you're in the boundaries of risk and the risk parameters are there and you're structured and you're trading in the right environment and you're doing all those other things that are aligning you with the conditions you know you're good at, then give yourself a bit of flexibility. Say, hey, I'm trading the right market at the right time with the right size. When I pull the trigger, it's up to me. You're a discretionary trader. You're building yourself into a discretionary trader. That's the edge of a discretionary trader. Don't try and make yourself into a human algo because we're the worst algos ever, right? We've got to sleep, we've got to eat, we get tired, we make bad decisions, we slip up. Crap algos. Make yourself into a good discretionary trader. Give yourself room to operate, but within those risk boundaries. You don't want to just be shooting from the hip with a strategy. You don't want to be punting away with any size you want. Structure, but some kind of discretion. All right, so... Big one here. Mark, Mark. After five minutes, just wanted to give you a five minute uh, time check there. All right. Thank you much, Luke. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, Mark, I struggle to stick to my plan. I struggle to stick to the plan. Okay, here's what you do you say, right, I struggle to stick to my plan. Think about the trader you want to be at the end of the year. What does he look like? He or she look like? How does he conduct himself? How does he think? How does he act? How does he prepare? How does he journal? Think about that. And then your trading plan. Is the actions that can align that thinking. So the actions that you are taking day to day aligns with the trader you're trying to become. So all of a sudden, you get this beautiful alignment where when you're in the heat of the moment and you can't stick to the plan, you're doing stuff that 
you're in that zone, you're like, ah, oh, I want to take this trade. I've been stopped out. My max loss for the day in the first 15 minutes of the day. Damn it, I want to keep trading. Market's volatile. And everything is trying to get you to click that mouse to take another deal. You've got to say, no, no, no. Does that trader, the, the goal I'm trying to hit, does that guy who, who's got 800 grand on the board at the end of the year, does he act like that? No, he doesn't. Whatever number is for you. Does he act like that? No, he doesn't. So just when you stop yourself and you go, hey, I'm stopping. My plan says to not break this rule, so I'm not going to break this rule. So actions aligned with those thoughts really just help help you stick to it. They really help stick to it. So summary, got a few minutes. Let's hit the summary. Tactical plan. Uh, review trades, top 10%, bottom 10%, pro tip principle. Reflect on your trading. Think about it. A big fan of that. Construct a trading plan. Visualize the trader you want to be at the end of the year. Think about how he conducts himself, how he acts, his character, all this type of stuff. And then you have to create that alignment, thoughts, and actions. That's the sweet spot. I think that's the sweet spot anyway. All right, so decide this. Decide, just make the decision to significantly improve your trade. Decide to refuse to accept low standards. Just make the decision. You know, if anyone's lost any weight or put on any muscle in the fitness world, once you make the decision, you just do it. Just decide to do it. Just refuse to accept low standards. Know you can achieve more. Know you can reduce that emotional roller coaster of disappointment, frustration, and whoa, I'm a genius. Oh, I'm the worst friend in the world. Whoa, I'm a genius. You don't want that. It's not, it's not a place to operate. And decide to put the work in now and reap the rewards later. All right. So that's what I've got for you. Thank you so much. If you want to check me out on YouTube, UK Spread Betting, go and have a look there. If you aren't already a subscriber, you know, encourage you to subscribe. Loads of free content there, loads of stuff going into depth about all sorts of things, strategies, mindset. Uh, you name it, and trading plan stuff's on there as well. And if you want something more, more premium, want to take your trading to another level, join our community, tradersmastermind.com. I hope that's of some value. Thank you so much. Mark, thanks. That was a great uh, presentation. Loads of uh, really important things there that I think you need to know as a trader. I just want to remind our clients that are signing in now that uh, in the top right, there's that little question mark um, button and that's how you can actually send through questions for the presentations going forward or if we don't get to your question pepperstone talks at pepperstone.com or you can at us on our twitter account pepperstone fx and hashtag pepperstone talks mark there was one question just before you shoot off um, that i wanted to ask you and it's come through here how do you know when you're over trading and how to stop it <laughs> great question um do you know what i think you've got to be honest with yourself and you know in your heart when you're overtrading, you just know it. You've just got to take a take stock of the situation and say, well, number one, are you are you going outside of the rules of your plan? If your plan is to say, hey, I'm only supposed to take five trades a day and you've done more than that, well, there's logical thing you've overtraded. But also, just are you trading when you've got no edge? Are you trading in the middle of zones? Are you trading? Just just trust your instinct. And that answer is there. And if the answer is, oh, I might be, but, 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 if you've got a but, 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 then you're overtrading. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure you'll get many sign-ups off that presentation. It was really fantastic. You're really engaging to watch. Thank you so much for joining us at this event. Really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. Absolute pleasure.